uh, we are studying about prayer. Uh, one of the prayers that we've seen in um, uh, earlier when we discussed kinds of prayers is intercession. Uh, we've touched on it briefly, but we will look at it in greater depth today. Intercessory prayer is uh, simply going to God okay, on behalf of someone. Now, the best example for us always is the Lord Jesus. We saw his prayer life, his personal prayer life, uh, and how he communed with the Father. When it comes to intercession, uh, we, we see that you know, the Lord Jesus, currently he is in heaven interceding for us, but even in his life here on earth, he has, uh, you know, he, he has approached the Father on our behalf because ultimately what is intercession? It is about going to the Father or going to God on behalf of somebody. So on our behalf, Jesus has done many things. In Isaiah 53, verse 12, uh, we read that he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So he bore the sins of many. If you look up the Hebrew word there for bore, which is nasa, it means he carried, he carried away or he lifted our burdens. Okay. Uh, and you know, their intercession, the word intercession from the Hebrew word, it is Hebrew word is paga and it means to meet. Okay. Uh, and uh, we see that, you know, in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, again, the word paga is used uh, and which means has laid. So in other words, you know, we are seeing that the Lord Jesus has carried our burdens, our wounds. Okay, we know he also carried uh, so many other things for us. Right? He, he uh, took our stripes on him and he carried our pain, our sickness, uh, and, and whatever punishment we were due, and he carried it to the Father. He met with the Father on our behalf. So that in itself is an act of intercession because at the end of the day, intercession is to go to God on behalf of other human beings. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He went to the cross of Calvary on behalf of us. So we see that the Lord Jesus has engaged in intercession uh, in terms of his work on the cross. Now, typically, we think about intercession as prayer. Okay, saying the words to God, which is correct, but only in the case of Jesus, uh, in a practical way, in his actions, he has done intercession okay, on the cross for us. Because what did he do? He went to God on behalf of us and he carried our burdens for us on the cross. So the cross is a picture of the intercession of the Lord Jesus for the people. And 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5, we also read that the Lord Jesus has become our mediator. Okay? Mediator is a person who is, um, you know, a go-between or, or somebody uh, who, again, interacts with the party in concern and, you know, a, a, another party in concern. So they do the talking, you know, they do the negotiation, they do, they, they bring peace or they bring uh, a decision out of this uh, interaction. So the goal between is the mediator, a reconciler, or another word used for mediator is also intercessor. So who do we have between God and us, the Lord Jesus? He became the mediator of the new covenant. So the example for intercession is there for us to learn from the life of Jesus himself. Now, not that uh, in what he did on the cross, it's not like he prayed a long prayer and that's the intercession that we are referring to, but his action itself of carrying our burdens was the intercession that he offered us. So what exactly did the Lord Jesus do for us on the cross in his intercession. 
So three things we notice here. One is he carried our burdens. Okay? Burdens includes everything, you know, sin, sickness, sorrows, grief, uh, whatever affects us in this, uh, in this fallen world. He carried all those burdens for us. Then what else did he do? Second thing, he met with God on our behalf, bringing God's mercy and forgiveness to us. Okay, so he did that work. Thirdly, he confronted and overthrew the works of darkness, triumphing over them. So this is what Jesus did in his intercession. One is, it has to do with us carrying our burden. Second is meeting with God, right, to receive what God has to offer. Third is to overcome the evil one. And three things the Lord Jesus has done through his action of intercession on the cross. Now, when we talk about being intercessors, we too can engage in these three things. Okay, not uh, by the action, because the action that Lord Jesus has already done. He is the son of God who was called to redeem us in that way. But through our prayers, we can also, one, carry the burdens of others or we can bear one another's burdens we can pray for people okay and that's how intercession helps secondly we go to god on behalf of the people and we said that you know jesus brought us god's grace god's mercy so when we go and we start praying for people what happens same thing you know, god is able to release mercy he's able to release grace he's able to release uh, his healing power and do many wonderful things in people's lives so that is the second thing to go to god on behalf of the people third thing that we can do we can also confront the powers of darkness on behalf of the people and overthrow the work of the enemy so similar to the intercession that jesus engaged in we are engaging through our prayer so the results are similar but yes, Jesus, Jesus' inter, intercession is an action hanging on the cross. But our intercession is through prayer. Okay, Through prayer, uh, we also see these things happen in people's lives. So right now, where is the Lord Jesus? I began by saying that he is currently before the Heavenly Father. And his role right now is that of our uh, heavenly high priest. So he sits at the right hand of the father and the Bible says that he is making intercession for us. So now he's engaged in a, if you can say so, praying for us, but not that same intercession which he did on the cross because that action is already completed. But as a high priest, he is before the father and he continues his work of intercession. There are some references given here in our notes and you could uh, look it up. Uh, maybe we can read one, one verse is what I'm thinking. Uh, how about Hebrews 7.25? Can somebody please read that? Hebrews 7.25. Hebrews 7, 25. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Amen. Amen, yes. So he lives to, he always lives to intercede for them. So the current role that the Lord Jesus has in heaven is that of intercession. Okay. So, in the presence of the Father, yeah, appearing on our behalf, uh, you know, what, what is the Lord Jesus' function? We are told that he is an advocate. Okay? An advocate is somebody who pleads on behalf of another person. So as an advocate, he is before the Father. Now, does this mean, see, because Jesus is in heaven right now, he is an intercessor, he is an advocate. Then why should we intercede? You know, uh, what do you think? Isn't that a valid question?
Anyone, any thoughts on that question? Uh, Pastor, is it uh, because uh, he is, uh, you know, uh, mediating because Satan is accusing uh, the believers. So this is my understanding. So Jesus is, uh, you know, um, be advocating on my behalf. Yeah, that's what I understand. Okay, okay, sure, uh, Divya, thank you. Um, uh, so, see, uh, again, the thing is, Divya, yes, he is an advocate, but when it comes to Satan accusing us, uh, the Bible is very clear that we've already been justified. Okay, so through the work on the cross, there is a there are things that the Lord Jesus has already accomplished. You know, with uh, with regard to our forgiveness, our position in Christ, and all of that. Okay, but now, yes, he has an intercessory role up there in heaven. However, Jesus Himself, you know, He said, "I'm going to the Father." But now that I go to the Father, you ask in my name. Okay, so He instructed us to ask for what we want in the name of Jesus here on earth. So we have to continue interceding or, you know, uh, engaging in prayers where we ask for ourselves as well as for others. So he never said that that is going to stop. So what what exactly he is praying for each one of us uh, up there in heaven? No, that uh, is a question. Okay, uh, but it's it's no longer the justifying of the believer because he's already done that on the cross. But he is praying for us. He is praying for us up in heaven. But the uh, the uh, conclusion that I want us to come to is that yes, the Lord Jesus is interceding for us right now. But the intercession that he is engaged in doesn't stop us from interceding. Because we also have a role that we have to play here. But Jesus himself has told us before he ascended and said, once I go to the Father, you ask in my name, you pray the Father in my name, and he will do it for you. Ask and your joy will be full. So we do have a role of intercessory prayer, which we have to fulfill. All right. Um, so, I mean, does that make sense? Is that clear? Can you just repeat it, uh, Pastor? Uh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you, you didn't understand it fully? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, how about we read uh, John chapter 16 and verse 26. Can you read it, Divya? Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. John... John chapter 16, verse 26. Six, yeah. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you. Uh, in that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. For the Father himself lo loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I come forth, I came forth from God. Is that the verse? Yes, that's that's the verse. And that clearly says, right, that uh, once Jesus is gone, we are the ones who have to ask the Father. Okay. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. And Jesus also said, I'm not saying that I'm going to ask the Father on behalf of you. So on the basis of this, just because the Lord Jesus is our intercessor in heaven right now, we don't cease from intercession. That's the point I'm making. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. So, yes, he is interceding, but not uh, doing our job for us. So we have a role to play, and we are still here on the earth, uh, expected to move in that role of intercessory uh, intercessors. All right. Now, Okay, let's let's just take a look at how this was done by some people in the Bible. Now, Sukkenu has posted on the chat here that uh, Abraham, when he interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, 
uh, he went to God on behalf of the sinful people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, that's right, uh, uh, Sitkenu. So we see that even in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, uh, there were people who pleaded on behalf of others. So Sodom and Gomorrah, we know God wanted to destroy uh, those people. But because his nephew Lot was among them, uh, Abraham discussed with God and said, okay, if there are so many righteous people, will you spare the land? And you know, God said, uh, uh, you know, like, okay, let's, let, all right. So basically he was trying to negotiate with God and come to a place where minimum number of righteous people at least were found in that land. That way the land would be spared and his nephew, uh, his family uh, uh, together with the land. But we know what exactly happened. Right? That there were no righteous people in the land at all, and, and the land really had to be destroyed. But you see the role that Abraham is taking up here. We said an intercessor goes to God on behalf of the people, and that's exactly what Abraham was doing. So that is what intercession is, and that is the example for us to follow. Now, Abraham. Also, in the case of Abimelech, you know, a, a king who uh, was afflicted, right? That that King Abimelech, he wanted to uh, take away, you know, Abraham's wife, and uh, because of that, God had actually, um, like, there there were consequences for uh, that thought that Abimelech had, but God told Abimelech, you know, you ask Abraham to pray for you. So Abraham functioned in the role of an intercessor. So he prayed for Abimelech uh, to God. And you know that that is that's what an intercessor is. He's going to God on behalf of the people. So uh, Abraham did that, and we see that you know God healed. It says God opened up the wombs of the women and uh, the flock and, and all of that. So God actually did not. Uh, punish Abimelech because of Abraham's prayer. So Abraham functioned in the role of an intercessor. Now, another intercessor that we can look at is Moses in the Bible. Now we know that the people of Israel, who uh, whom God delivered from Egypt, before going to the promised land, you know, they, they went through the wilderness and, excuse me, in their attitude, uh, we find them uh, as complainers, grumblers, uh, you know, people who were not thankful to God, uh, they did not live with faith. Okay, so because of all these reasons, God was very, very upset with the children of Israel. But in the Bible, there are times when Moses pleads with God and he says, God, you only brought these people out of Egypt. Now, because they are so, uh, you know, their, their attitude is bad. If you kill them in the desert, what will the people say about you? So what is Moses doing? Similar to Abraham, he's trying to speak to God on behalf of these people and say, God, you spare their life. Don't do anything to them. Protect them. So he is behaving or he's acting like an intercessor. Okay? And uh, in this case, now, he is a leader of the people. And what does the leader do? The, the leader is actually uh, protecting the people from being destroyed. So God spared the lives of the people because of the intercession of Moses. And there are two scriptures given in our notes here, uh, which you know say the same thing, but maybe we can read it. So Psalm 106 verses 21 and 23 and also Hosea 12 and verse 13 uh, uh, on page 44. Can somebody please read it from the notes? Ma'am, Psalms 106 verses? Yeah, 21 and 23. Psalms 106 verses 21. They forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt. 23. So he said he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him 
to keep his word from destroying them yes thank you thank you sidkenu and can you read the verse below that also from hosea uh you're on mute sidkenu ma'am actually i'm using my bible ma'am hosea which chapter oh oh okay 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 uh hosea 12 13 sorry to trouble you i didn't know your well, chapter 12 verses 13 yeah the lord used a prophet to bring israel up from egypt by a prophet he cared for him okay thank you sidkenu thank you so you know you see here how uh, these two verses tell us that it was because of moses that their lives were spared what if moses didn't pray what if abraham didn't pray so see if they did not if they had not prayed i think you know uh, like abimelech or yeah for sodom and gomorrah it did get destroyed uh, but then at least abraham attempted all right uh, and in the case of moses because he pleaded with god their lives were spared and yesterday we saw that what uh, not yesterday uh, a few classes ago that what shamar preserved right the people of israel were preserved protected because of the leader rising up and praying so there was definitely a need for these men to intercede and if they did not intercede the people could have actually experienced the consequences so that is the importance of intercession now let me quickly look at the chat here i noticed uh, some comments so we will look at that and then come back to our lesson so zeltoli says my understanding is it because god has given us free will and we should be praying and interceding even if jesus is interceding for us in heaven yeah yeah that's that's fine zeltoli yes uh, he has given us free will and we uh, discussed how through prayer we can exercise our authority right so uh, that's also something we are doing through prayer so that's all right you're not wrong uh, and isaac uh, isaac has commented naturally if we have an advocate that needs to plead our case we need to explain the particulars of our case to him okay so if jesus needs to intercede for us we need to present our case to him so he knows what we need okay uh isaac uh, yeah that's an interesting way of uh, looking at things um okay what i would say for that uh okay so uh, what i'm thinking isaac is uh, i see a point but like jesus jesus told us to pray to the father in his name okay so uh, i i don't i don't think we would need to tell him uh, our needs every time so uh, that's the point i want to make uh, does it make sense isaac or you have you have something to uh, say about that yeah <clears throat> yeah i mean i'm just just looking at it from another angle because we stated uh -huh. here that um ah huh. this is sitting on the right hand of god and he yes. is interceding for us well basically i'm not sitting here that we will send our intercession to jesus because you are, you rightly say we pray to the lord but i was just looking at the practical side of things that if he is an, an advocate he advocates generally for all of us and sometimes if we our case is particular well in the name of jesus we say this is our need and then his intercession will continue on our behalf that was just a broad thinking anyway thank you oh okay thank you thank you isaac i got it so it's just a yeah, as you said a broad way of looking at things 
where uh, you you mentioned that but uh, yes of course right now uh, the lord jesus is interceding up in heaven and we are interceding from earth the only thing i want us to understand is that you know the the connection between these two uh, i think we shouldn't try to make a connection because what's happening is we have our role to play which is to pray to the father uh, and you know exercise our authority release our dominion through prayer and you know we are we are going about doing those things and at the same time jesus is doing his thing being an advocate now uh, and and we leave it at that okay we leave it at that uh, but then you know as uh, sometimes in prayer what happens we know that we have to pray to the father on behalf of jesus uh, sorry in the name of jesus uh but we may say things like uh, dear jesus if we might address jesus in the prayer uh but you know it's understood it's understood that our prayers are going to the father right in the name of jesus so we don't have to worry about it but we are not really uh like if you look at it technically i don't think we are uh, we we must tell jesus what to pray to the father okay otherwise it becomes like how uh, you know there is this concept of you tell the saint and the saint will tell to the father but now we have direct access whatever i want to tell the father jesus has done his work on earth and i have been authorized that is why that name of jesus is the authority with which i can directly access the father i don't even have to go through you know that intercessory role that jesus has up in heaven i don't even have to do that directly i can speak to the father in the name of jesus and that is the capacity that every believer has okay and isn't that amazing that you can have direct access to the heavenly father okay uh, am i making sense class is that okay okay Ma'am. All right. Okay, great. Yeah. Great. So we have Thank done. You so okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I think that's good. So we have that clear. The point is, we have to do our role of intercession, and we can directly access the Father. Okay. Then we talked about how there have been people who have interceded for other people um, uh, on their behalf and. you know they've carried their burdens remember we we said that carry their burdens meet with god on behalf of the people and then overthrow the works of darkness on behalf of the people so we looked at abraham we looked at moses uh, and in the case of job you know i i think we touched upon this earlier uh, there is a passage where you know job he really hopes uh, that somebody would plead on his behalf because he was going through such a difficult time this is job 9 verses 32 and 33 i will read it for us it says for he is not a man as i am that i may answer him and that we should go to court together nor is there any mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both so there is a desire which job has for a mediator or somebody in between okay uh and he says in verse 20 and 21 my friends scorn me my eyes pour out tears to god oh that one might plead for a man with god as a man pleads for his neighbor so he is looking for a mediator longing for a mediator longing for someone to plead his case with god on his behalf and even in the old testament people played that role to go to god on behalf of other human beings okay and god now we saw a man desperate for a mediator desperate for an intercessor now is god also looking for any intercessors to uh, uh, bring you know people's needs and people's issues before him yes as much as we want somebody to stand in the gap on our behalf and go to god god is also waiting and seeing would it 
a human being come and uh, plead the case of others with me so there are passages in the bible where god is looking for an intercessor again somebody please turn to ezekiel 22 and verse 30 ezekiel 22 and verse 30 please whoever can like if you have it easy you can quickly turn to that passage Ezekiel 22 verses 30 Ah yes yes I looked for a man among them who would build up a wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it but found none Wow thank you thank you Sukhkin so you see that you know God is saying I'm looking for a person I'm looking for one man to stand in the gap so if there can be one person who mediates even then in this case it's uh, you know some form of a judgment god is saying that yeah i'll do away with it even if one person pleads and then there are other passages in the in the word of god which says you know pray for the peace of your land uh, so that god might bless this land where he has taken you and then it, uh, there are there's a passage which says you know watchmen on the walls like you you pray on behalf of your city so praying on behalf of people praying on behalf of the city god also expects people to do that so uh, that's this whole intercession design is created by god so why how does it help for us to know see it helps for us to know because we know that we are doing what god wants us to do when we are praying for other people okay and uh, we can be confident that god is hearing our prayer so god is also looking for intercessors uh, and especially right in in the bible we see that intercession uh, can be made for those who are going away from god remember how moses he prays for the children of israel they are going in their own path but he prays and says like lord spare them you know have mercy on them uh, and god relents in the new testament i think yesterday we spoke about this remember in james chapter 5 where we said that elijah was a man just like us and yet he prayed that it should not rain it did not rain he prayed that it should rain and it rained uh, and we said that in the context of persistent prayer we can pray for those who need healing we can also pray for those who need mercy those who are going astray from god and you know that that there is a place to persistently pray for such people okay so that they can come back to god so intercession can be made and intercession should be made especially for those who are going away from god what happens when we pray for such people so god's grace and mercy is extended on their lives they are protected you know god would guide them god would show them the right path okay, all these things god would do for them so we can stand in the gap and we can cover them with our prayer so intercessors can pray particularly for those who may be going astray now uh talking a little more about intercession you saw how uh moses was praying for the people isn't it and we saw in hosea uh, 12 and verse 13 that the people that preserved because of a prophet and who is that prophet it was moses god spared the lives of the people because of the leader and from moses's example you know we can say that those of us that the lord has called to leadership those of us that the lord is uh, you know um, positioning in in leadership this is one of our primary roles yeah we can lead the people with wisdom and we can guide the people and all of that but one of the first things that we can do for the people is to pray for them moses prayed for his people and in the same way every leadership one of the primary tasks or primary roles of the leadership is to pray for the people of god and that will protect the people you know that will bring god's blessings upon the people so and so many things are uh, done in the lives of the people when leaders actually pray for their uh, 
uh, for their flock or the people that they are leading. So uh, when we talk about intercession, also remember that leadership must engage in intercession. When it comes to intercession, you know, uh, we, we may not necessarily know how to pray. Yes, if you know the needs of the person, uh, you could bring that before the Lord. But in addition to that, Right? We really need that spiritual empowering from God to continue in prayer. Where are we going to get this from? The Holy Spirit, he has a name. Okay? And that is the spirit of supplication. In Zechariah 12.10, we are told that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of supplication. Grace and supplication. So when I want to intercede for someone and I feel... Like, ah, I don't have, I don't have the capacity to do this. How am I going to intercede and persistent prayer for another person? We can always depend on the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need your strength. I need you to empower me. I need you to help me. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of supplication who can help us. In Romans 8, you remember when we talked about uh, praying in the spirit, over there, we saw how the Holy Spirit helps us. When we don't know what we have to pray for, He helps us. Okay, And we, uh, along with the Holy Spirit, in fact, that word help there, uh, it is from a Greek word, which means to take hold against together. Okay? Something like, um, you know, if... if uh, how do I say? Take hold against together. It's uh, suppose you're you're fighting, you know, arm wrestling with somebody. Okay, uh, I know this is not like a classroom setting where we could have done it and and seen in person. But anyway, you understand arm wrestling, right? So when arm wrestling is happening, let's imagine that this hand is one person's and this hand is another person's, and you know, one person is stronger than the other. So. Uh, the stronger person is putting the weaker person down. But what if this weaker person, okay, which is my right hand here, the weaker person gets an additional support of a stronger person, much, much stronger person uh, in this game? What will happen? The strength of the so-called strong person will be nothing when the weaker person gets additional help, right? And the equation turns. So... What is the Holy Spirit doing? He takes a hold of us against whatever the circumstance, against the enemy, against you know the adversary. So we have additional strength which is being exercised, okay? Which we can utilize. It is not our strength, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit. So He takes a hold of us against the enemy, and so He helps us. He brings in, brings in that additional help when we are interceding. And especially when we are interceding, we can depend on the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you know, I don't know what to pray. You please help me. Or, you know, we, we may have our own uh, weaknesses. But in those moments, we can say, okay, Holy Spirit, you help me to overcome these weaknesses. And, you know, I want to engage in intercession. So the Holy Spirit becomes our helper. He is that spirit of grace and supplication who empowers us, okay? And he leads us in those intercessions for other people. And, you know, he comes alongside us. One more name of the Holy Spirit is Parakletos, okay? Parakletos is, uh, and it's like uh, somebody who comes alongside us. So whenever we think about intercession, you know, we can be encouraged knowing that it's not something which God expects us to do in our own strength and in our own capacity. But we always have the help of the Holy Spirit with us. So we can um, work with that help. Yeah. So what makes up for successful intercession? So far we, we saw that, you know, we can intercede and we can pray for others. It's important. People need it, uh, and uh, God also wants somebody to intercede. Leadership can intercede for others. Okay, but what makes up for successful intercession? Uh, 
all right so what i'll do is i think i'll take i'll pause for a bit and uh, address any clar any doubts that we may have or um, who thinks some comments you have a questions let's deal with that and then i can touch on this last section here so so far we are talking about intercession anything that you want to clarify okay yes can you please go ahead ma'am i was just admiring like in first samuel chapter 25 Ah. the head david nabal and abigail aha uh-huh. david sent some messengers to nabal just to greet him but the nabal he just insulted david and david became very angry so he went he sent some men to just finish nabal but his wife came in between and she don't she didn't told uh, david or nabal that she is going she just left no she lost no time and she took 200 loaves and some stuff like that and she ple- she went to david and she pleaded that please leave my husband my husband is just a fool ma'am this incident can be also considered as interceding yeah 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 good good one uh, sir kenu yes that's the simple meaning right like you go uh, on behalf of somebody to plead on behalf of somebody yeah that's fine okay thank you ma'am yeah sure thank you yes uh okay rosalyn is asking can intercession be also a call of god yes uh, roslyn it can be a call of god okay so we will see later on about a person called epaphras who uh, who served mainly with intercession okay so intercession is it's a call it's a ministry and some people can you know exclusively have that call on their lives yeah good questions everyone good thoughts good questions yeah ma'am i i also have a question yes so, yes divya so how do we understand that um, god has called a person for intercession what uh, okay. yeah how do we discern that mm-hmm. yeah so similar to all other callings we are uh one is god could just tell us that that you have been called for intercession so you know you know it from the beginning uh, or the second way is that as the lord puts burdens on our hearts and we start praying you start moving in that direction you realize that that's the call for your life okay so either your life experience clarifies some that call for you over time or you hear from god right at get go that that is what you are called to do does it make sense yeah yes yes yeah sure sure and uh, divya uh, did we discuss in your class i don't know which class we had this thing uh, so usually when we talk about calling you know uh, what happens is over time things become clear like for example somebody is teaching god's word uh, now they may start off in a small sort of a way sharing uh, you know the word of god but as opportunities increase and increase and revelation increases you know people might begin to notice hey we're looking at somebody who's teaching the word you know at another level here so maybe that person is called to be a teacher of god's word okay and that's when we they, we say oh okay here's a teacher so in the same way now somebody was praying they may not know that i am an intercessor but they start praying they just pray 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 and then you know they realize oh my goodness god has given me such a burden and uh, this is this is a ministry There's so much time that uh, is getting invested in this now they may realize over a period of time that they're actually called for intercession as a ministry okay yeah that mm. makes sense thank you yeah sure sure thank you thank you yes yeah good good ones any anything else class um question but um but i think uh, the verse we read yes, in regarding moses in psalms 106 verse 21 uh, that 
really gives us a picture of uh, how an indecision how an indecisor is uh, mm-hmm. like i uh, just uh, read that one portion there his chosen one stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath and that the word breach itself gives as a uh, you know a lot of importance to be an indecisor and so much value that god himself is giving uh, for an indecisor that's a lot of insight there thanks mm-hmm. for sharing that pastor yeah wow thank you thanks john yeah sure it's an important task uh, and uh, god expects human beings to do that okay and he's given an audience to us and saying okay come bring your case to me so when god is giving us that invitation uh, i think uh, it's a privilege we can step in yeah good so anything else uh, don't worry about the last section here uh, i'll i'll take it up in the next class anything else about intercession that you are thinking about elisha anything on your mind about intercession I am not sure if Elisha is able to respond, but good. Okay, how about we think this through some more, and we come back in the next class. Uh, we can discuss it little more, and then I will cover the last section here. But it's an important topic. It's an important topic. Uh, let's, uh, you know, take it up as a privilege to intercede for others. So with that. we can bring today's class to a close and i would like to request someone to please pray uh i'm just wondering uh linden are you comfortable to pray are you okay to unmute and pray okay i'm not sure if he's able to do that uh Okay, anyone else? I think uh, Anita. Anita, are you okay to pray? Yes, Father. Yes. Father God, thank you for this amazing session, Father. Thank you for each one of us, Father. Thank you for Pastor Nancy as he is teaching us about the prayer and intercession, Father. Thank you for this amazing session we had, Father. Thank you for uh, help us to apply this. Uh, and this session and to our life father help us to pray in intercession father thank you for each one of us bless each one of us father we praise you we worship you and we glorify your holy name father in jesus name we pray amen amen and thank you so much anita god bless uh okay class thank you for uh, joining in today and uh, we will connect again next week we will continue from the same chapter intercession Hey God bless have a great weekend bye for now